Hello everyone and welcome to episode 60 of this Let's Play series of Star Trek Online. My name is Winters and you are very, very welcome. Now since the last time that I recorded an episode there has actually been a new release. It was called Agents of Yesterday Artifacts. And part of that release was a new lighting update. And um, yeah, you may notice that uh, some maps now are very, very different compared to the way they were uh, when we last played. Um, you can probably see some of the lighting there on ESD is a, a little bit, um, I suppose, say clearer. Uh, you can prob probably notice it there looking at the sun. Um, and yeah, uh, basically, uh, there's a whole new lighting system for in game. So what we'll do is we'll uh, go into ESD now and you can take a look at that map and um, you should notice a fairly substantial difference there. Now here already in the transporter room you can notice quite a difference. Um, it, well, I had the bloom turned up quite a bit as well, but uh, it definitely, in my opinion, looks a lot better. Um, if you look uh, up at some of the railings there, excuse me, <coughs> uh, where I was just mousing, you can see uh, that there's a fairly big difference. The sunlight is shining in. And uh, actually, just as we come up here now, you can see on the ground there's a light source directly above us. And I like what it does with shadows. Depending on where the light source is, and if you pass by it, your shadow now um, sort of moves with you um, as you move, uh, you know, as it normally would in real life. You know, uh, if you walk past a light source, your shadow will, uh, you know, eventually be in front of you. Um, because the light source is behind you. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I actually have a small little bit of a confession to make. Uh, and again, this is from the last time that I recorded an episode. 40 days have actually passed since then. And what I've been doing during that time is basically working on my reputations. Uh, the um, Temporal Defense Initiative, Task Force Omega... Um, Nakura Strike Force and so on and I have basically been building up the marks up to uh, at least 1225 marks for each reputation because that's how many marks it takes to bring a reputation from tier 0 all the way up to tier 5 now if you actually look uh, I have a project that is ready to be collected now and that's the same for all of the reputations and if you look at the um, number there 97,500 it is the same for all the different reputations and basically I've held off on recording so that I could show you guys uh, what actually happens when we hit tier 5 so once I collect this final project that will go up to a hundred thousand and uh, we will have everything up to tier 5 <coughs> Excuse me, again. Um, so if we look over here at our uh, assets window, you can see all the marks that I have uh, currently got. And uh, one, I, I've mentioned this before, but each reputation, uh, when you complete it, gives you 750 marks for each of the reputations. Now, there is an exception to that rule. Uh, Task Force Omega or the Omega reputation only gives you 500 marks and it only gives you 9000 dilithium. Every other reputation gives you 750 marks and 32,000 dilithium. So just note that Task Force Omega is um, the odd one out when it comes to the standard format for reputations. I don't know why that is, it's just it's always been that way. Um, so yeah. Anyway, you may notice here that I have uh, 2,820 Iconian marks. Basically what I've done is I've been focusing primarily on Iconian rep because I am going to be getting a number of pieces from the Iconian reputation. Um, so for example, uh, Deflector, Engine, Warp Core and Shield. 
Uh, <clears throat> God, I'm sorry, I have a really bad frog in my throat. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, so moving on. And the next thing I want to talk about, and actually I'm going to apologize about this. Uh, I'm going to be sort of jumping back and forth between different things as I talk about them. Um, <clears throat> I have a list here of stuff that I want to talk about, but um, it, it, it's I'm, I'm trying to do it in you know uh, as linear as I can. So just bear with me. So what I want to talk about now is uh, advanced and elite queues. Now, anytime you complete successfully an advanced or an elite queue, you will get one of these R&D reward boxes. And only on advanced and elite will you get a R and D box that gives you a very rare crafting material. So, for example, we have trinium gas, magnesite, verteron particle, uh, tetrazine gas, and this one, a radiogenic particle. It's a very rare crafting material. And uh, I got this particular one from doing the crystalline entity advanced. If I click on this one. We see we get the same sort of uh, regular R and D mats, but this time we get trillium K. That came from Infected Conduit Advanced, and as again, it only rewards very rare materials on advanced or elite queues only. If you do a normal queue, you'll just get normal junk, you, you know, uh, common and uncommon, uh, and maybe rare materials. You will not get, get very rare. So here are some other ones that we have here. You can see now I'm highlighting over them, like the plectin and the radiogenic particles, trillium K, um, argonite gas, and so on. And actually, uh, this is something to worth uh, taking note of as well. Salvage technology. Salvage technology only comes from elite PVE queues, uh, providing that you successfully complete them. That is the only way to get salvage technology, uh, is from elite PVE queues. Now, something that I should point out is elite PVE queues only come after you reach level 60. So, from let's just say level, uh, well, you can do PVE queues, I think, from level 10. Um, but let's just say from level 10 up to level 59, um, you can do uh, advanced and normal. And elite is uh, level 60 onwards. And if we click on each of these, you can see here now this one, Brotherhood of the Sword. It gives a Kralon gas for the elite and for the advanced ones. But when we click on the normal one, there is no very rare craft material attached to it. And if you go down through the other queues, you'll see that there is different, very rare crafting materials attached to all the different advanced and elite ones. But, for example, um, yeah, this one is Kralon Gas. Uh, now that I think about it as well, uh, I should point out that we are actually level 60. We are level 60 now. And I have managed to get to level 60. I know the last time we, we recorded a video, we were level 50. I think 56, I can't remember, but that has basically all come from uh, DOF missions, uh, Admiralty, and PVEQs. So anyway, uh, moving on, uh, I don't think I talked about these um, daily projects quite enough the first time that I mentioned them. Uh, we can see here that uh, it require each one requires 30 marks, 15,000 EC, 2,000 expertise, and the reward gives us 2,500 reputation XP. We also get 340 dilithium, and we also get a equipment requisition. Uh, in this case, temporal defense initiative equipment requisition, and that's what these boxes are here now. The ones that I'm mousing over at this at the minute, and there's the one for temporal defense initiative. So every time you do one of these daily uh, reputation missions, you will get one of those uh, equipment packs for each reputation, providing you do the daily mission, obviously. And in those packs is a random piece of reputation gear. Anytime you open any one of them, you're guaranteed to get a random piece of reputation gear. Or you can get an elite mark for that reputation. So, for example, uh, you know, you could end up with... Um, I, I don't know what, uh, let's say um, f with Romulan rep you could end up with a plasma beam ray. Um, with um, 
Let's see, uh, Terran Ramp, you could end up with, um, I think it's Disruptor. <clears throat> um, and actually, th these now, uh, what I'm highlighting over at the minute, are Elite Marks. Again, uh, Elite Marks only come from Advanced and Elite uh, PVE queues. So, for example, the Borg Neural Processors come from uh, Omega queues. Uh, Chronoton Buffers come from... Um, the Temporal Defense Initiative uh, queues, ones, queues that give out temporal marks. The Iconian data probes um, or data cores come from queues that give uh, Iconian marks and so on and so forth. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, like the one here now, Voss Cybernetic Implants, you get those from queues that do um, uh, Dyson marks or even actually the battle zones as well. Um, now, you may notice I have quite a number. I have 47 of the Iconian data probe uh, cores. That's because I'm going to be purchasing a lot of items through the Iconian reputation. And I am going to need a lot of those uh, Iconian uh, data cores in order to purchase all the gear that I need. So, we just got rid of uh, all those R&D boxes, and it's bumped up our numbers nicely. And you can see we can just uh, skim through them there. Um, right, let's see, what's next? So, I guess we'll start opening these. Uh, we'll, we'll just go through each one, and we'll see what exactly it is that we get. So, right, you can see here we got a thorn infused Polaron Pulse Wave Assault Mark 12. Uh, we got a tactical console here from this one, which I think was Dyson Rep, if I remember correctly. Uh, would that be right? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that was Dyson Rep. God, I have a memory like a goldfish. Uh, the next thing is Radiant Anti Proton Sniper Rifle Mark 12, uh, crit H times 3, and it's very rare. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, the vast majority of stuff that you're going to get from these boxes is going to be junk. Absolute junk. You just go to the 50% vendor and you sell it and get as much EC for it as you possibly can. You cannot sell it on the exchange because this stuff is bound to you once you unpack it straight away. However, the uh, what I often find is I do get decent ground weapons. And when I say decent, I'm saying... Mark 12 very rare weapons and I often kit out all of my bridge officers with those weapons. That, uh, um, what I'm saying here is obviously what I get from uh, the boxes. Now depending on what your build is you may very well get some space weapons that you can put onto your ship. So let's say you're running with a plasma build you very well may get let's say a Romulan beam array for your ship if you're running a plasma build so it's it, you know it suits it works it fits into your build so you would put that on your ship if you look here on mine i am using a phaser build and i got these phaser cannons from the uh i think it was terran a uh, terran rep that i got those from and you can see i have a turret there as well so everything that i actually have here on my ship came from, well not everything, sorry, uh, the very, these these three cannons, a uh, turret, yeah, that's it, all came from uh, reputation reward boxes that I got. Everything else um, is from uh, loot drops or uh, mission rewards. Uh, I have not spent a single penny of EC on anything to do with this build. Um, Everything, as I said, has been from uh, loot drops, mission rewards, or from those um, reward packs from the uh, reputation. Um, right, the next thing that... Um, well, actually, I suppose I should point out, because um, some, some of you might be wondering... Um, but the very same thing uh, is hap or no sorry I, right, I know what I want to say there is no point in putting 
gear that you get from those boxes onto your ship if it doesn't suit your build. So take, for example, that withering disruptor dual heavy cannon <clears throat> that's over in our inventory. We would not put that on our ship, even though it is an upgrade from, let's say, the uh, uncommon cannon that's in the top right-hand slot. I'm, and as you can see, I'm moving over here now. It will be completely pointless to put that in there. Even though it is an upgrade, it will be completely pointless because we are using a phaser build and all of our tactical consoles are buffing all of our phaser weapons except for that disruptor one. So absolutely pointless. Even though it is an upgrade from what we had in there, there is no point in putting it in because it's not benefiting from our phaser tactical consoles. So that's something very important to keep in mind that um, at this stage of the game you need to have a fair idea of what way you want to go. If you want to go a phaser build, uh, whether it's beams or cannons, um, you know, if you want to go a disruptor build or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as you can see here, these uh, consoles are giving a tw uh, plus 26.2 phaser damage. And again, I got all those consoles f as uh, loot drops. Same with this Neutronium Alloy, plus 16.2 kinetic damage resistance rating, plus 16.2 all damage, energy damage resistance rating. All of this stuff came from uh, loot drops. Uh, because I, I played a lot of PvEQs, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, over those 40 days, I played a lot of PvEQs to build up all my marks so I could finish out all of the reputations and have enough marks left over uh, to purchase whatever gear I needed. So, for example, the Iconian rep, uh, you know, I have uh, 2,800 marks there. That took quite a bit. Um... You can see here now uh, I've got uh, very rare Mark 12 weapons on each of my bridge officers. And again, all that stuff has come from uh, those reputation boxes. And this is something that I typically do. I typically pick a different Mark 12, very rare weapon for each one of my bridge officers. Because there are accolades for, like, let's say, dealing 100,000 plasma damage. Yeah, for dealing, you know, firing on enemy, there is uh, accolades for, let's say, you know, dealing 100,000 plasma damage onto enemies. And there are accolades like that for all the different damage types. So, Phaser, Polaron, Tetrion, uh, Antiproton, Plasma, Disruptor, and I think, uh, I think that's it mainly. I might have missed one or two there. Um, so that's why I usually pick different ones. Now, uh, <clears throat> this box that I'm uh, hovering over right now, Agents of Yesterday Artifacts Giveaway Pack. This was actually uh, given away after the release of the Artifacts update. And as you can see, it gives a 3 Gamma Quadrant uh, Duty Officer Cadre uh, a Research and Development Pack and a 10,000 experience bonus pool. Um, I wanted to show this to you guys uh, because, remember, this is a free-to-play account and um, uh, I, you know, I'm not spending a penny on it. Actually, something else that came with that as well is uh, uh, we got 12 free slots. Every single character in-game got 12 free inventory slots, so our inventory is actually increased in size a little bit. Um, so there we, there we are. Now we've got our three uh, Gamma Quadrant Duty Officer cadres. We've got our uh, Research and Development Pack, uh, which will receive a random assortment of R&D materials. And then we have our uh, 10,000 XP bonus pool. I'm not going to open the, R or the uh, Duty Officer Packs because if you look at my roster, I've got 96 DOFs already and I only have 100 slots. So I'm not going to... Uh, open that just yet. Instead, I'll put this stuff in my bank and we'll uh, look after that later. Uh, let's see, what will I do? Um, 
Just make sure I have an EV suit. Yep, I do have an EV suit. Okay. I think we'll take a quick trip over to <clears throat> the 50% vendor. And, uh, yeah, we'll get rid of this um, trash, basically, uh, that we got from those reputation boxes and get some EC for us. Sell, 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 sell. Awesome. Okay, so we'll head back towards the exchange. And actually, if we look here now, uh, I think the last time we checked our EC, we had um, about 2 million EC. You can see we're up to just over uh, 3 million. Um, and actually, this is probably a good time uh, to point out as well. Um, when you are doing the R&D, the R&D, sorry, the um, daily projects for the reputation, um, you get 340 dilithium for each one of those. <coughs> Excuse me. And since there's nine different reputations, that's just over 3,000 dilithium for each, or for the uh, uh, whole lot of them. And, um, yeah, you know, the, that's that's a nice little pool of stuff to, to get. You can see now already, we have 336,000 dilithium practically um, refined as well. That's actually refined. Um, so we're doing quite well with our assets. Uh, We've uh, just over 1,500 fleet marks there as well. <clears throat> I'll talk about that in a later episode, what fleet marks are and what they can be used for. Um, Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to figure out what to talk about next. Um, I guess since uh, we've got all that covered, we'll um, collect all of these projects and we'll get everything up to uh, tier 5. And if you look down in the bottom left hand corner there, you can see the dilithium uh, is uh, cranking up and it'll just come to just over 3000 dilithium. Um, and uh, if we look at our assets now again you can see our dilithium has gone up and we can actually refine that little bit now as well right um, uh, right R&D um, Again, our R&D schools, this is something that I've been doing every day, uh, even over the last 40 days. I have been logging in every day and I've been setting up my R&D schools. You can see we have two up to level 15 already. One is nearly at level uh, 14 and another one is at level 6. And yeah, this is something, again, that I have been keeping up on top of uh, every day. You can see that there's a, a, a lot of new recipes we have unlocked. Um, yeah, quite a number of recipes. We'll go into that into more depth and detail at a later point. Um, also, been keeping up with Admiralty, uh, which has helped me level up as well. Um, we are at level eight for all of the uh, three of the uh, campaigns: the Federation campaign, Klingon campaign, and the Romulan campaign. Now, the reason why I have two missions there and I'm not claiming them is because once every 20 hours you can or you do get a bonus experience so let's say this particular mission now 372 experience um, if I claim that now the bar will just move up by 372 experience 
but if I hang on to it until tomorrow when the clock resets and I get the bonus XP on top of it or I will get the bonus XP on top of it when I do claim it so that's what I've been doing every day I've been logging on every day and I've been doing at least two missions per day if not three the reason why I might only do two missions per day is because I don't have enough ships simple as that I, I may only have enough ships to run two missions um, as you can see here we've got some ships that are now uh, in maintenance mode and uh, they cannot be used while they are in maintenance um, but even with the small amount of ships that I have uh, you can see you know I'm already up to level 8 uh, and as I said it's, it's helped me level up to 60 as well um, all right, I think we can close that what to go over next? Okay, we can see here now that all of the different reputations are up to 100,000 XP. But, if you notice down there along the left hand side it says they're tier 4. Now the reason for that is, every time you reach a new tier level in a reputation, you have to actually do an upgrade to make it progress to the next tier level. Um, so, for example, when it got to tier 1, we had to get it all the way up to tier 1, then we had to do an upgrade to uh, get the reputation to go to tier 1. And if we click on the Upgrades Available tab here in the third slot, you can see here we have it, uh, Temporal Defense Initiative, Claim Tier 5 Reputation. And every time we hit a new tier level, we got one of these. So I'm going to select this now. It only costs 5 marks for each one. And again, we can see the same thing here as well for Omega Rep. So we'll select that and we'll get that one um, slotted. And we have the very same thing for Nakara, claim tier 5 reputation, and the same all the way down for each of the different reputations. Now keep in mind what I said uh, previously, that all reputations give 750 marks for completing tier 5 in that reputation. The only exception is Omega Rep. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, click on the upgrade and uh, we can start putting in our marks. Okay, so that's them all nearly done. By the way, folks, I apologize for um, these sort of uh, uh, pauses that I take. Um, I had a bit of a mishap when um, I recorded this video. Uh, it actually didn't record any uh, any of the sound, you know, like from my mic. So I've had to re-record this and try and put uh, the audio in on top of it. So I'm trying to remember what I was saying the last time when I actually recorded it. Anyway, you can see here what we got there. We got 750 marks, we got five chronoton buffers, 40,000 energy credits, and 32,000 dilithium. Now here for the Omega one, we got 9,000 dilithium, 500 marks, the same 40,000 energy credits, and we got uh, 10 Borgnio processors. 
Now, the Nukara rep is a little bit different. Uh, we have to go to a specific location in order to claim that, which is Nukara Prime. The Romulan rep, that is different as well. Uh, it, it actually uh, has changed a little bit uh, in the last update. Uh, we have to go to New Romulus to do that one. Dyson Rep also requires you to go to a location and we have to go to the Solonay Dyson Sphere and to Dyson Joint Command to pick up uh, that reward. After that, every other reputation, once you complete the project, it gives you the uh, Tier 5 reward straight away. It is only for Nukara, New Romulus and Dyson that you actually have to do an extra step before you get the reward. Um, Alright, we didn't get that one. Uh, when we switch maps, we will get that award. It's just, you know, the, it's like a glitch in the server. It just, we didn't get the accolade and the server doesn't realize it yet. But when we switch maps, um, it'll pop up for us. And what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if that tier 5 re reward mission is in our available tab, but it's not. Um, but what we do have is a new bridge officer. And what I'm looking at here now is the different bridge officer abilities. And I think I go with the uh, Bajoran Tactical. And we also have some more duty officers that we can claim. You can see the Nakura Strike Force one there with the at the very top with the mission rewards on the right hand side. We will pick that up later. Along with the Dyson one and the New Romulus one, we'll pick those up later. Now if you look in the bottom right, we have 138,000 lithium unrefined. And we have more to come as well. That is going to build up by another 60,000 or so. Um, so it, we should be about 200,000 lithium with a grand total of 500,000 lithium um, once we get all of those um, rewards. Now, traits. Since we are level 60, and I have just hit level 60 very, very recently, uh, it has unlocked the final trait slot for us. So we can slot in an additional ground trait and one additional space trait. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going looking through the different ground traits and trying to figure out what one I actually want to add. So anyway, while I'm actually doing this, um, I'll try and explain a little bit better. Uh, basically what i done, um, and this is referring to the recording now, um, I set up all my software. It had been 40 days since I had recorded anything, and I started recording. And I didn't check the settings for the mic. I didn't think I had to, but somehow the mic got muted through my software that I was using to record and when I went after I finished recording and I went back to check the file and make sure the levels were all okay and everything I realized that I didn't have uh, or there was no uh, audio with the file and I done another recording and I realized that the mic was muted through my software so what I've done is, I'm actually playing the video that I originally recorded, and what I'm doing now is uh, recording it again, and I'm talking along with it. So if that makes sense, I'm, I'm playing the video that I recorded, and I'm recording that video again, but this time I have got the mic unmuted. Right, anyway, moving on. Uh... I said we would come to the space traits later in the game, and uh, now is the perfect time to do it. Uh, basically, what I'm pointing out here is, uh, every time you get to a new tier level, you unlock two new traits, either to ground or to space, and you can see all the different reputations have them. 
So when you get to tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 and tier 5, you unlock additional traits. And when you click on traits and go down to space reputation, these are where you can find all the traits. So we can see here we have a massive list of them. And you can have a, a total of five traits. Uh, the fifth one you have to unlock and we'll come to that in a later episode. So the first one I'm going to pick here is ship weapons have increased armor penetration. That is very, very good. Uh, let's see, next one, uh, trigger damage immunity when hit. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, phaser damage and control. Nope, torpedo, nope, torpedo, nope. Using a shield heal, bridge up, nope. Uh, minor shield penetration, yep. Uh, increase max hull. Auxiliary power, no. Hull regeneration. Um, chance to deal shield penetrating kinetic damage. Um, let's see. Um, right, okay. So, happy enough with those. Uh, the next thing that we have now, or that we have to do, is uh, select ground reputation traits. So we'll just do the same thing. We'll go down through the list here and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, figure out what are the best ones. Uh, when you get to this stage, it is completely up to you if you want to do as I've done and you know wait until uh, you've unlocked them all. Uh, that's what I personally like to do. I like to wait until I've unlocked everything and then I can make an informed decision because I can compare all the traits to each other. Uh, or you can start selecting your traits as you unlock them. Now, what I'm pointing out here is for every reputation, there is one active reputation ability and they vary between space and ground. Uh, there's a number of space active reputation abilities and there's a number of ground active reputation abilities. And <clears throat> if we scroll down here, we can see uh, by the little icons that are pointed out here, uh, whether they're space or ground. What I always do is, uh, do is I always pick the space ones. Because in my opinion, ground is an absolute breeze. It's unbelievably easy. And spaces where um, I, you know, prefer to focus everything on because that's more of a challenge. Um, that uh, additional space trait I'll probably unlock later on, but for the time being, we'll just go with uh, those four that I just picked there. Um, let's see what else is there to go over. Um, I suppose I could point out that um, it is completely up to you. You know, you can um, uh, try out the traits. Um, you know, you don't have to go with what I picked. Uh, you can try different traits and see which ones you prefer. It doesn't cost you anything to, you know, switch traits out. As long as you're not in a combat map or, you know, in a mission, uh, basically, if you're in a social zone, you can switch your traits on the fly. You just, you know, go to traits and you can uh, switch them to whatever you want. Um, I find most people, once they've picked their traits, you know, that's it, they stay with them. Um, at least that's what I do. I pick my traits and I stick with them. <clears throat> now, something else that has changed in the most recent update is uh, kits. Kits got a revamp. And if you look here at this one, this tactical kit is giving us a plus 26.2 kit performance, which improves all kit modules. Now how this is different to the previous system is basically a kit would have that bonus that I just mentioned there, but it will also have up to five slots where you could slot in modules. And in the case of uh, tactical kits, there were either strategic modules or assault modules. And depending on the type of slot, you would either have to put in a strategic mod or an assault mod uh, into the different slots. Whereas now, you just have five kit modules, and it doesn't matter. You can put in whatever you want, as long as it's career-specific. 
meaning um, a tactical cannot put in engineering uh, kits uh, modules. Uh, tactical captains can only put in tactical kit modules. And yeah, so that's it. You basically just have a kit slot now <clears throat> and then five module slots on top of it. And that's it. Plain and simple. And the kit will, uh, depending on what kit you have, it will have uh, one or more bonuses to whatever. It is completely up to you to decide what kit is the best kit for you. <clears throat> this kit that I have is the only one that I had. I picked it up as either, I think it was a loot item. Uh, it could have been a mission war, but I'm pretty sure it was a loot item. Uh, skills, skills, right. Um, we have picked up f uh, five additional specialization points since we last talked about them. And uh, I suppose I'll actually spend those now, I think. Um, this ability actually is very important, rock and roll. If you look at it, it says immune to all incoming damage, 100% flight speed, immune to slow, turn rate set to zero. That is an absolutely fantastic ability, especially if you're in a jam or it looks like you're about to die. When you click on that, uh, because it is an active ability, uh, not a passive, uh, when you click on it, you are 100% immune to all incoming damage for the duration of rock and roll, which is a couple of seconds. It is absolutely fantastic and a brilliant space skill. So um, you can purchase that after spending a minimum of five points in the pilot specialization. Uh, I'm going to spend all my five here now. We can see this one gives a plus turn rate, ten percent turn rate. Uh, this one gives uh, just bumps everything up by an extra ten percent. So uh, the ones on the left were uh, plus twenty uh, defense. I'll up unlock the other five when we get the next uh, five specialization points. And uh, we have our skill tree done already. There's our tier 5 Iconium resistance. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, slot in the rock and roll ability and uh, just quickly show you guys what rock and roll does uh, because it's pretty darn cool. There. That's it. And that is really, really handy. I mean, it's... it In cues like uh, uh, Crystalline Catastrophe, that is absolutely brilliant when the um, Crystalline Entity is about to um, blow out its uh, energy thing. Um, but obviously very useful as well if... Um, you know, you're taking a hell of a lot of damage or got a hell of a lot of uh, weapons firing on you. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thanks a million for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Winters, and I will see you next time. Until then, take care.